Doris Day, a famous actress, made a big impact on the entertainment world with her memorable performances. One of her most important moments was in Calamity Jane, where she showed how talented and charming she was. Even though she was well known, there are still interesting stories about her life that people love. Feel free to share your favorite memories or experiences with this great actress in the comments below. And stay tuned for more interesting, funny, surprising, and even sad facts about her life. Keep watching this video for more insights into the life of this amazing actress. Known for her impressive skills both on screen and in music, she delighted audiences with her roles in various memorable movies. Some of these include Pillow Talk, a charming romantic comedy alongside the likable Rock Hudson. Another highlight is Calamity Jane, a lively musical western where she effortlessly portrays the spirited main character. Let's not forget her captivating performance in The Man Who Knew Too Much, a suspenseful masterpiece by the legendary Alfred Hitchcock. In each of these films, she charmed audiences with her charisma and talent, making a lasting impact on cinema history. For those unfamiliar with her work, these movies are a great way to discover her boundless talent and versatility. Her filmography covers a range of genres, ensuring there's something for everyone to enjoy. In The Doris Day Show, she portrayed Doris Martin navigating through a changing TV landscape. When the series aired, rural sitcoms were popular, but as networks shifted to urban shows, it faced cancellation. The move to San Francisco in season two kept the show alive amidst the upheaval. In Please Don't Eat the Daisies, she played Kate Robinson Mackey. Her connection to Janie's page through the pajama game led to this role. Her versatility shone through as she transitioned from stage to screen, showcasing her talent. As Georgia Garrett in Romance on the High Seas, her journey to the role was serendipitous. At a party, Sammy Kahn recognized her potential for the film's score. Her impromptu performance caught the director's attention, leading to her casting. Throughout her career, her adaptability and talent propelled her to success on stage and screen. Her decisions and abilities cemented her status as a beloved entertainer, leaving a lasting impact on the industry. In the TV series The Doris Day Show, she played the character Doris Martin. When it debuted in September 1968 on CBS, some TV critics joked about the frequency of her character's deceased husbands implying foul play. In Please Don't Eat the Daisies, she portrayed Kate Robinson Mackey. A musical number she practiced for an amateur show, Any Way the Wind Blows, was originally meant for her earlier film, Pillow Talk. Interestingly, the song title even served as the working title for Pillow Talk during its production phase. Towards the end of the Doris Day show, she became tired of uninspiring scripts from her staff writers. Preferring to avoid dull storylines, she often chose episodes with extensive fashion, show sequences over ones focusing on guest stars or dialogue. Doris Day encountered financial problems and other struggles throughout her life. Despite her successful acting career, she faced challenges managing her money. One main reason was the mishandling of her earnings by her husband and manager, Marty Melcher. He made bad investments, leaving her in significant debt when he passed away. This forced her to keep working even into her later years to support herself. Moreover, Day experienced personal hardships, including failed marriages and the loss of loved ones. These emotional struggles took a toll on her well-being and added to the burdens she faced. Despite these challenges, she persevered and remained strong, continuing to pursue her career and find moments of happiness. Later on, she stepped away from the public eye and focused on animal welfare activism, finding comfort in her love for animals. Despite the difficulty she faced, her impact endures through her timeless films and her work for causes she cared about, reminding us of the strength and resilience of the human spirit in tough times. In the film Lover Come Back, Doris Day played the role of Carol Templeton. About a year and a half after the movie was completed, its costume designer Irene tragically committed suicide by jumping off the roof of Hollywood's Knickerbocker Hotel. In her 1975 autobiography, Doris Day suggested that Irene's suicide might have been driven by her secret, unrequited love for Gary Cooper, who had recently passed away from cancer. In Move Over, Darling, she portrayed Ellen Wagstaff Arden. During a scene in the movie, Ellen describes a film to Bianca while giving her a massage, and that film is My Favorite Wife from 1940, which happens to be the original version of Move Over, Darling. Transitioning to television, she starred as Doris Martin in The Doris Day Show. 
She revealed in her autobiography that she first learned about her obligation to do this series following the unexpected death of her husband manager Martin Melcher in April of 1968. Upon going through his home office, she stumbled upon a handful of scripts for something called The Doris Day Show. Throughout her career, Doris Day played various roles in both movies and television, showcasing her versatility. In Calamity Jane, she portrayed the titular character, and the soundtrack featured songs supervised by Ray Heindorf. The album included both tracks directly from the film and re-recorded versions by Day herself. In 1995, J Records recreated the complete film score, incorporating songs from a stage production. On television, Day starred as Doris Martin in The Doris Day Show. However, tragedy struck when her husband and manager, Martin Melcher, passed away before production began. This deeply affected her, leading to a period of isolation in Palm Springs. Facing tough decisions, she weighed whether to proceed with the show, delay its debut, or retire due to financial difficulties, including owing back taxes. In Please Don't Eat the Daisies, Day played Kate Robinson Mackey, with Spring Byington portraying her mother. Byington later transitioned to television, notably appearing on Laramie as Aunt Daisy Cooper. Doris Day's career spanned various roles, from the big screen to television, showcasing her versatility and resilience in the face of personal challenges. Doris Day had a diverse career, taking on different roles in both TV and movies. In the Doris Day show, she played Doris Martin. However, there was some tension between her and actress Fran Ryan, who played the family's housekeeper. This led to Ryan's dismissal after just 10 episodes, and Naomi Stevens took over the role. In the movie Calamity Jane, Day portrayed the main character and impressed Hollywood star Joel McCrea with her performance. McCrea, who was a fan of Day, even let her ride his horse, Dollar, in the film. In that touch of mink, Day starred alongside Cary Grant. Despite their 18-year age gap, they both delivered great performances in this romantic comedy. Her career showcased her versatility from sitcoms to westerns to romantic comedies, proving her talent as an actress on both TV and the big screen. In Midnight Lace, she played Kit Preston. This movie shares many similarities with Alfred Hitchcock's Dial M for Murder. Both films have a telephone as a crucial element, a husband named Tony, and are set in London. John Williams and Anthony Dawson appear in both, with Williams playing the inspector each time. The cast includes actors from other Hitchcock films like The Man Who Knew Too Much, Dial M for Murder, and Psycho. In the Doris Day show, she portrayed Doris Martin. In one episode, her sheepdog, Lord Nelson, wanders into city traffic. A driver honks at them, played by Ellen Corby, though uncredited. Her debut acting role was in Romance on the High Seas as Georgia Garrett. She was naive about filmmaking and thought scenes aboard a cruise ship would be filmed on an actual boat. When she asked when they were leaving, the crew found it amusing. Doris Day starred in Lover Come Back alongside Rock Hudson. During filming, there was a funny incident with Hudson's wardrobe malfunction on the beach scene. The crew had a good laugh, especially when the projectionist played with the footage, making it seem like something unexpected was happening. In Julie, Day played the character Julie Benton. The movie featured several classic cars, including a 1956 DeSoto Firedome, a 1956 Plymouth Belvedere sedan, and a 1956 Dodge Custom Royal. In The Man Who Knew Too Much, Day portrayed Josephine Conway McKenna. There's a scene where James Stewart's character gives her a large glass of alcohol, likening it to medicine. This moment is reminiscent of a similar scene with Carol Lombard in Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Throughout these roles, Day showed her versatility and contributed to some memorable moments in cinema. Doris Day showcased her vocal and dramatic talents in Love Me or Leave Me alongside James Cagney, earning praise from Cagney himself and even catching the eye of Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock cast her in The Man Who Knew Too Much after being impressed by her performance in the former. In Oxford, England, there exists the sole British fan club dedicated to her, known as Friends of Doris Day. Pillow Talk featured her in the role of Jan Morrow, with notable use of split-screen optics to create clever sexual innuendos, including a memorable bathtub scene with Rock Hudson. Her range as an actress shone through in these films, from a dramatic portrayal in Love Me or Leave Me to comedic timing in Pillow Talk. In Pillow Talk, she played the character Jan Morrow. The producer, Ross Hunter, was interested in the movie and talked about her attractiveness, saying it was time for her to show it off. She appeared in several films with Gig Young, such as Young at Heart, 
teacher's pet, the tunnel of love, and that touch of mink. In the movie Julie, she took over the role of Julie Benton from Anne Francis, who was initially chosen for the part. Her husband, Martin Melcher, played a significant role in her career and got her involved in the project. Throughout her impressive career, she charmed audiences with her talent, making a lasting impact on the Hollywood era known as the Golden Age. Her performances were not just memorable, they were timeless classics that still connect with viewers today. Indeed, her partnership with Gig Young created some unforgettable moments in movie history. From romantic comedies to heartfelt dramas, she effortlessly showed her versatility as an actress, confirming her status as a beloved icon of the silver screen. In each role, she brought a unique mix of grace, wit, and authenticity that endeared her to audiences worldwide. She stands out as one of Hollywood's brightest stars, reminding us of the lasting power of her talent and the significant role she played in the world of entertainment. This text was, in the movie Julie, she played the character Julie Benton really well, showing off her acting skills. Before they started filming, she had a car accident, but luckily she wasn't hurt. She stayed calm and handled the situation really well. In Romance on the High Seas, she played Georgia Garrett. Betty Hutton was supposed to play that role, but she couldn't because she was pregnant. So Doris Day took over, even though she didn't get as much money for it and wasn't the top star. But she did a great job and showed how good she was at acting different kinds of roles. In The Man Who Knew Too Much, she played Josephine Conway McKenna and people loved her performance. She was scared to fly at first, but her husband convinced her to take the role, even though they were filming in faraway places like London and Marrakesh. Doris Day was really good at playing all sorts of characters, even when things in her personal life were tough or the movie business was changing. Each time she acted, it showed how talented and dedicated she was. She's remembered as one of the greats in movie history. This story was, in Move Over, Darling, she played Ellen Wagstaff Arden with James Garner and Elliot Reed, showing her charm on screen. She and Garner had great chemistry, also appearing together in the thrill of it all. As Judy and Send Me No Flowers, she delighted audiences with her humor and kindness, proving herself as a beloved leading actress. Sharp-eyed viewers might spot familiar houses from popular shows like The Munsters and The Ghost and Mr. Chicken as the characters move around the neighborhood where she and Rock Hudson's characters live. And who can forget the catchy tune, What Do We Do? We Fly, from the musical Do I Hear a Waltz? It's a song that pays tribute to her special place in entertainment history. Doris Day's presence in these movies brings something magical, reminding us why she's still loved from Hollywood's earlier days.